when I get to a certain part of the presentation. But first of all, I just want to greet everyone this evening and, and thank you so much for joining this webinar. If you are anything like me, your time is so, so precious and you've probably had a busy week and I really thank you for setting aside some of your precious Friday evening to join us. And I want you to be ready to interact with me on this one. I'm going to give you some ideas, but I need feedback from you as we go along to make sure that we all are not only hearing the ideas, but we are um, relating that to our own personal situation. So if you're not already familiar with the chat feature on um, GoToWebinar, please make sure you can see where you can type a message because at certain points I'm going to be asking you to give me feedback on how this relates to you personally. So I've been a Toastmaster for almost 10 years now. And when I went to my first meeting, I went, I joke, because I wasn't wanting to be a better speaker or a leader. I went because I was running away from my children. I wanted something that was just for me um, and had nothing to do with me being a mother or being a wife. And I had always had an interest in public speaking and perhaps I'm one of these strange people who always loved public speaking. And I'd heard of Toastmasters, but I've never met someone who had been a member. So when I went to my first meeting, I had very little idea of what I was getting into. And I could tell you so many ways in which this has influenced um, my life. It's been incredibly enriching. Um, little did I know that when I went to my first meeting that being a Toastmasters member would lead to me starting a business as a professional speech coach. And I've subsequently published two books on public speaking and had so many opportunities, none of which would have happened had I not been a member. And the club I belong to, we've been lucky enough in almost the 10 years that I've been there, we've always been in the same venue. So when I go to that meeting room, we, well, we meet every two weeks, um, it's familiar. And there's a certain magic that happens in a Toastmasters meeting. And you see it in other people and you see it in yourself. And if you watch people who've just joined, it's amazing to me how you can see their level of uh, competence and confidence increase by about their third or their fourth speech. It's a tangibly more confident person who stands up and delivers their, their speech and shares their passions and their ideas. And you can see people growing in leadership. If you watch your club president take over in the beginning of the year, and three or four months into the year, you'll see so much growth in them. And, and we've all can see this in one another and see it in ourselves. And ultimately, what happens in a Toastmasters meeting is wonderful. But if that magic stays there and you never take that newfound confidence and assertiveness and um, a belief in your own abilities, if you never take that home with you, or you never take it to your place of work, or you never take it to your place of worship or to your community, then it really is a wasted opportunity. It only comes to life when you take it back to your real life. And that's where you get the real value, where you take what you learn in Toastmasters and you apply it. And tonight we're talking specifically about our career, but you can apply this learning and this um, wonderful transfer of skills and benefits to your family and to your community. Whatever you are passionate about, you can make a difference when you learn to speak better and you learn to lead better. So I'd like to ask you now, and I'd like you to, um, to reply in the chat box, how many of you consciously look at Toastmasters as an opportunity to build your career? And if you do look at it as an absolute opportunity to build your career, what are you specifically looking for? So I'm asking you to look at Toastmasters through a career filter. So if you can be more purposeful about using your Toastmasters membership to build your career, if you have that thinking when you come to a Toastmasters meeting, 
you will see opportunities that perhaps you didn't see before. You will see leadership roles or speaking roles in a different light because you then link them directly to your career. So I'd like you to think about at least three skills that you can develop that would help you build your career. And if you can put those in, in the chat box now, that would be wonderful. So we're really getting ones of personal growth and influence, um, wanting to be a public speaker and a self-employed trainer, coaching and teaching, self-presentation, practicing speeches that are on the job, planning, facilitating leadership skills, attracting new customers, facilitating meetings, personal branding, they're coming in fast and furious. So the importance of this is that you've identified areas that you know, if you develop these skills, they would enhance your career. It would, if you develop these skills, it would make you more competitive, more marketable, and more likely to be promoted or hired. So if you're working for yourself or you're selling yourself or your company, you can increase your influence and your ability to turn networking opportunities of meetings into sales or deals or clients and those are significant things and if you had to put a tangible value to any one of those i think you would be astounded as to how valuable those skills are so that is the first step towards leveraging your toastmasters membership to build your career is identifying what it is you need to develop so next, I want you to think of those skills that you've already written down. I'd like you to put in the chat box, what is the business benefit of acquiring and developing those skills? So it's, it's fine to say you want more clients, but what's the business benefit? How is it going to benefit you personally? If you can put a, a, a monetary value to it, put down that number. How? How much value do you think you can put on those skills that you're trying to acquire? So if you could put that in the um, chat box now, that would be great. So in other words, you've got the skills you want to develop and how does that add to your business? How does that make you more marketable? So we've got some coming through, leading more effectively and efficiently saving time. I mean, that is so valuable. 5,000 euros a year, higher paid assignments, more leads, less operations. So it's so important when you actually start identifying the gaps that you are trying to develop and putting a monetary value to this. And priceless, inspirational influence. So whatever it is that you do, if you can speak and lead better and be more effective at what you do, you can increase your presence and your influence. And you can have a bigger impact doing whatever it is that you're good at and whatever it is that you're paid to do. And ultimately, you can change your prospects in terms of being the one who has chosen to head a new team, being the one that is more likely to be promoted, being the one that people want to work with and want to hire. So when you put this, actually focus on the value, the reason I ask you to do that is because all of us are busy. And when you think of taking on an extra role at Toastmasters or an extra assignment, the first thing that comes to mind for me, and I'm certain also for you, is that just that, I'm already so busy. How on earth am I going to fit this in? And it's only when you relate the benefit of more influence, more presence, more money, more clients, um, making yourself more competitive, that it makes sense to give up more of your precious time. And the one thing I have learned in my time in Toastmasters is that every, take, every time I take on a new role, I have to obviously learn new skills because often I'm venturing into a territory that I don't have a lot of expertise in. So I've got to learn new skills and I've learned that I have to expand my capacity. 
I have to be able to do more in less time or more in the same amount of time. And each time I've challenged myself to do that, I have been able to do it. So we have to realize have that to realize we've all got the, the same amount of time, but we can do more with that time. So I want you to try to take the time objection out of the equation and try and find ways to make that time uh, available and to use it efficiently because we've just articulated what the benefits are to taking on more within Toastmasters in terms of our career. Now, why would we want to develop those skills in Toastmasters? There are many, many courses available, internet-based um, workshops that you can sign up for. Why would you want to develop those skills in Toastmasters as opposed to any other avenue? And you're welcome to give me feedback on the chat um, box. What are the advantages of trying to learn those skills in Toastmasters as opposed to anything else? Safe, low threat environment, hands on, not too much theory, practice, minimum costs, expensive fees for courses, immediate feedback, the community, good feedback from others, continuous practice. So those are all so, so valuable. And it's a no risk environment. I always say that in Toastmasters, no matter how bad your, you perform the role that you're taking on, you guaranteed applause. And you don't get that anywhere else in life, that you are guaranteed applause. And the worst thing that can happen is that you get feedback to help you become better. So it's a wonderfully no risk environment. It's supportive. You get feedback, valuable feedback. You get immediate feedback. And one of the things I've learned is so valuable is you learn to lead volunteers. And that is so, so valuable because you can't fire anyone. You can't always choose your team. Nobody has to listen to you. And my ability to persuade and influence has increased dramatically as a result of being a Toastmaster. And I'm sure many of you can share similar stories with me. So you also lead learn to lead teams and you learn to work in a team because that's another art and skill that's valuable for you to be a team player in your company or in your business because people want to work with people who are good for the team it's a very valuable skill so now i am going to let me just open up another screen here and then i want to share a website with you Right. Oh dear, I've just lost it again. Just give me a moment. There we go. Hopefully you should be able to see my screen now. This is a website of a club in Cape Town where I live. And it's a club I've been a member of for many, many years called Cape Communicators. And Cape Communicators for many years has been an advanced club. And they struggled to get membership because all their members were dual members. And they eventually made the decision to not be an advanced club anymore, but to open the membership to everybody. But they positioned themselves differently. And they positioned themselves as a club for people who wanted to develop business skills. And what I'm going to share with you now is how they relate that what happens in Toastmasters to business. So you'll see across the top, you've got Cape Communicators and you've got these various um, tabs here. And the one is called leadership, the transferable skills. And a bit further below, they have this tab that says, become a committee member to skyrocket your leadership skills. Now, most of us, I don't know if your club's like my club, but when we ask people to volunteer to be on the committee, suddenly everybody's too busy and um, it's really a struggle to get those committee roles filled but maybe think of it differently as they've encouraged us to do so. So let's start off with the president. Now, as we go through these, I want you to think of those business skills that you wanted to develop and see if you can pick them up in the roles below. So they have said that when you become a president, you learn about team building, about leading a strategy, strategic planning, conflict resolution, project management, meeting facilitation, time management, 
parliamentary processes, consulting, coaching, and networking. Now, suddenly when you look at that and you think, gosh, maybe being a president is worth the time and effort because I can learn all of those skills. Let's look at VP education. You learn about scheduling, you learn about conflict resolution, negotiation, strategic planning, time management, recognition incentives, event planning, personnel development, career training and networking. All of us look at VP education often as one of the hardest tasks on the club committee. But when I look at these skills and I look back on my time as a VPE, I know that I learned so much that I've used in other parts of my life as a result of taking on that role. VP membership, personnel orientation and development, career planning, customer service, public relations, managing rewards and incentives, marketing and sales consulting, seminar development, networking. Again, that role suddenly comes to life. Let's look at treasurer, budget preparation, revenue tracking, revenue forecasting, revenue generation, money management, policy administration, purchasing and consulting. Secretary, report writing, policy administration, purchasing orders, processing, processing historian or librarian research, document control, event coordination. Sergeant at arms, inventory management, Master of Ceremonies, Communication Skills, Customer Service, Negotiations, Consulting and Event Planning, Past President, Team Building, Strategic Guidance, Consultation, Training and Coaching. Now, when I saw this on their website, I was absolutely humbled, I think, to realize what opportunity is always there if we look at it with the right attitude. And if we look at it as an opportunity to develop our skills rather than, oh gosh, you're kidding. You want me to take on a role? Don't you know how busy I am? So I think what I'm really saying is that there's so much opportunity in Toastmasters, but because opportunity doesn't always come from watching other people do a role, the most opportunity in the return on investment comes when you take on a role. And when you start being the person who contributes to the club. When I was a new member, our club president one day stood up. She was about to ask people to volunteer for club roles. And she said, I just want to let you know that there aren't a team of fairies that come and put this meeting together, create the agenda, get the room set up, manage the meeting. There are a group of dedicated people. And each one of us, when we join Toastmasters, come to absorb, to learn, to get. It's all about us when we join. We want to be the one who, who benefits. But she said there's a time and a point at which you have to turn into the person who gives. And that's where your true return on investment lies. And that's where your true leadership skills development lies. And that's where you accelerate your speaking skills as well. Because a lot of these leadership roles require you to speak off the cuff and to lead teams and inspire teams. So it's in the giving, it's in the putting up your hand to take on a role that you will get the skills that will help you develop your career. So if you're serious about developing your career, you can look at your Toastmasters membership differently. And you can look at how do you learn those skills that you need to learn by taking on speaking roles, by working through the Pathways program or the um, what some people call the Legacy program. How can you develop those career skills by taking on meeting roles, being Toastmaster, being Grammarian, being General Evaluator, being Timer? How can you develop your career skills by taking on a club officer role, by serving your club? What those skills we've just gone through on this Cape Communicators website. And then obviously, how can you develop your leadership skills by taking on, on district officer roles? And when you put those together, you can see there's so much on offer, but it's not coming if you only watch other people do it. The, the change comes when you yourself get involved and volunteer for these roles. So now is the time where I'd like to get feedback from everybody in terms of um, 
what you, your comments, your ideas, your suggestions, and um, then we can do a Q and A from here onwards. So feel free to give any feedback here. Okay, let me just open up the chat. In Toastmasters, it's exactly available that is needed for real life. District officer roles really rock. Being an area director, whoops, I've lost that one. Let me go back. Being an area director really pushed me to my limits. Yes, I will be available. Feeling accepted and free to develop my skills with my own speed and get very valid feedback. That is very important. If any of you have taken on any specific roles, can you share in the chat um, or in the message box how you did, what you learned from that that helped your career? If you are an accredited speaker, I am not a Toastmasters accredited speaker. Um, to get started with it, I um, suggest you go to the Toastmasters International website and type in accredited speaker in the search box. And then the steps are very clearly defined there. I think it's a wonderful thing to aspire to. Oh, we're seeing Peter Bird. He must be one of the um, attendees. And I, I think he's probably got his camera on, and that's why we're seeing him. OK, has anyone got any specific benefits, career benefits that they have already gained from taking on any of these roles? I benefited from BPPR by learning more about building social media audiences, and that's useful for my job too, absolutely. It's often tough to find volunteers, isn't it just? But I think the next time your club is looking for volunteers for the club officer roles, go to the Cape Communicators website and see if you agree with the roles or the benefits that they have listed there. You might have some different ideas and present that to your club members and say, this is a wonderful opportunity to build your career and sell it that way rather than saying, we need help, who's available? It might help. Benefited, Elizabeth, by leading teams as a club officer, which I need as a project manager, yes. My university invited me to be a representative because of my public speaking skills, absolutely. Freshly gained speaking skills when promoting a sustainability project in our office. Absolutely. How to present myself, make the right impression and inspire others. So we've all got these stories. And the other part of it is, you know, you've gained this. How do you tell people at work that this has happened and this is how without it sounding like you belong to a religious cult? <laughs> so I think you've got to just state how what you've learned has benefited the business. I've learned to manage meetings on time um, and therefore I get more done in less time or I've learned to keep meetings on agenda. I mean, that is just so absolutely valuable for any company. Um, yeah, if we look through the, the messages that are coming through, it is just so valuable. I evaluate externally whenever I get a chance. Um, gosh, they're coming. Thank you so much for, for putting all these messages on doing my own workshops and public speaking jobs after I got some learning from TM and I got more confidence in front of an audience. Yeah, the opportunity to test my material and speeches. Yes. And I was dismissed as a manager in business and take two as division and area director and club sponsor. I know I've become a meta leader. Absolutely. And learning, organizing events, when planning for area contests and officer trainings while being area director. There's so much value in taking on these roles. So maybe the next step is for you to think of the business skills you want to develop that you shared with um, us at the beginning of this um, discussion. And now that we've gone through the various roles, identify for yourself which avenues in Toastmasters will allow you to develop those skills. So if you can put on 
in the chat um, feature which roles within your club or within the meeting or within your um, district you feel will give you the best chance of developing roles, those roles. Officer positions, yes. And I think one of the um, mistakes we make when we're trying to get people to fill these roles is we don't sell the benefits. We tell them what it is. If you're president, you do this. If you're VPE, you do this. I think it's quite positive to have your club members or your committee members saying things like, this is what I've learned in my year as VPM and this is how it's benefited my career. So some people are saying, okay, mute your mics, please, if you're not speaking. Opportunity to lead teams, club president would help me in an IT project, VP membership. Yeah, so please mute your microphones. And Karen said that I'm sergeant at arms, which is rather a small challenge. I don't know how you do it in your clubs. In my club, the sergeant at arms is somebody who welcomes everybody at the beginning of the meeting and tells them where the bathrooms on are and reminds them to switch off their phones and tells them where they can smoke. And then um, they obviously make sure that people are called. We have a dinner break in our meeting and, and they make sure everyone's called back in time. And it might be a small role, but I've seen people grow in confidence in incredible ways, just having that small role to welcome everybody at every meeting. Okay, Bertie said, I learned about teamwork, working with people with different backgrounds, motivating others, learn to be flexible. If PowerPoint doesn't work, we can still deliver a speech. Absolutely. Okay, Svetlana, maybe you can mute everybody. I'm trying, and, I, and there are three people I cannot mute. Somebody which is has initials AAS, then caller 16, and somebody with the name uh, Yuraj. Can you please, I was writing a message to you. Can you please mute yourself? You disturb and, and you, the noise which is becomes background or covers uh, Aleta's presentation. Okay, thank, thank you so everyone. Much. And Lena says, I would like to do area director again. I learned a lot in the past years. And I think, um, it is very valuable to realize that, I mean, I, this year I'm doing region advisor for the second time, and I know I'm doing it so much better the second year than I did the first year because I'm more familiar with it, my confidence has grown, and I think there is a lot of value in repeating roles, but rotate your roles. Obviously, don't be the person who wants to be the same position every year. Give someone else a chance and you take on a new role and learn new skills. So now I think I'd like to open it up to question and answer. If you've got a specific question, please put it in the um, chat box and then we'll deal with that. So one of the comments, um, I think it's Tariq, said, I want to do the officer roles and then move on to area and district roles. There are so many roles available um, and moving up within the district also just keeps on expanding your capacity and you learn so much more every single step of the way. And, and I'll never forget when I was a very new Toastmaster, our international president at the time, uh, Pat Johnson came to our district and I was the district public relations manager at the time. And um, I learned so much from her. And one of the things she taught us was that you don't have to know it all when you take on a role. You can have a whole year with mentoring, with support, with feedback to learn your role. So don't think you have to be perfect to take it on, but be willing to work hard, to be accountable and to be teachable. Okay, Justinia, you said, can I share my story, how Toastmasters influenced my career? Wow, that is um, quite remarkable. I started off by doing Club VPPR, and 
little did I know that would lead to me starting my own business because people would phone me and I'd say to them, come to our meeting, this is what we do. And the one woman said to me, I'm phoning for my boss and he's too busy. Can't you help him? And very cheekily, I said, sure, I can, not knowing what I was getting into. And I went to meet him and he was a very successful businessman. He was a chairman of a group of companies, but he was terrified of speaking at his own 60th birthday party. And he hired me for eight hours worth of coaching just to help him deliver a speech at his own birthday. And that was my very first client. And then I discovered I liked speech coaching and I got more people referred to me. And then I went on to, to study a certification in speech coaching. And from there it grew. And I have to say that most of my clients have come to me through the Toastmasters network. People have heard what I do, they've seen me speak and they've referred people to me. And then as a result of, of that, I got a client who came to me to rehearse a speech for his own wedding. He really wanted to give a gift to his bride by delivering the most beautiful speech um, as the, the guy getting married. And that led to me publishing a book called The Wedding Speaker's Guide. And then my other clients came through and I've now published a second book, which is all the things I teach my clients. It's called Speak, Connect, Succeed. So I've had an extraordinary benefit from being a Toastmaster. I've learned to train, I've learned to lead teams, and all of that has led to me really having an incredibly rich life at the moment. But it didn't come through me just watching other people doing it. it it's come through me keep on repeatedly volunteering, and that has made all the difference. Right, let me look at some of these. Um, okay. Okay, the link to the um, website uh, is, let me just look at that quickly, sorry. I just want to make sure, Cape Communicators. Okay, so it's uh, www.capecommunicators.co.za and that will give you the, um, oh there, somebody else to share it as well, perfect. Um, okay, I'm just following up on some of these. Um, what is the one motivation I can provide to members to come to the meetings regularly? One of the things that I have seen um, that I think is very effective is a club that on every meeting has an item on their agenda called a member moment. And it's like a two to three minute um, time allocation and one of your members stands up and gives a two to three minute speech on how they have benefited from being a Toastmaster. Before I was like this, now I can do that, this is how, or something similar. And that's very powerful because people buy success stories and there are people like um, guests at your meeting who hear your success story and will join because they want the benefits that you've enjoyed. So that's one of the main me reasons I think you can motivate the existing members to come, get them to share their success stories, and it helps to motivate um, uh, the existing members as well as the guests. And it's easy to fit into a meeting. Right, let me just see. Um, okay, right, let me... People are always involved. There will always be unexpected changes. So you learn to utilize the resources you have rather than bemoaning what you do not have, what does not work. And that's one of the things I learned being VPE is to deal with last minute change all the time and to not get upset by it. Right. Just seeing which ones I haven't missed or have missed. How can we try to keep all members outside of the comfort zone uh, when members have participated in many meetings, everyone becomes more and more confident and stays inside the comfort zone so that skills are improved all the time. I think you've got to, and I think pathways will help because now people are going to be challenged to take on a new, new learning program which is unfamiliar to them. So I think that's one way that we can um, keep all members trying something new. and. I think it's always trying to give someone a new role. And 
So the new role could be taking on a meeting role like Toastmaster or General Evaluator for the first time. Another way is to encourage your members to go to a different club. And simply by being in a different environment doing the same thing, that's another way to keep you out of your comfort zone. But always keep coming back to the benefits. And when somebody has stepped out of their comfort zone by taking on VPE or president or a new meeting role or helping to run an area contest, get them to give your club feedback. This is what I learned. This is how I benefited. And I think when people hear those benefits, then they buy the success stories. Okay, uh, let's see if there's any. Cultural relations, which club or district role is best fit for developing cultural relations? I would say almost all of them, because you've got people from various backgrounds in your club, in um, area or district. So obviously, the bigger the team you lead, the bigger the opportunity to develop um, cultural relations. And I would say there's, there's no role, unless your, your club is people all in the same neighborhood aren't very different, which is probably not the case. I would see any of these roles will help you develop cultural relations. Okay, inviting former club members and successful professionals, guest speakers, absolutely. And the other thing I've learned is that in, in my own club, we have um, made a link between having, okay, we meet twice a month, so our meetings are about two and a half hours long. And we usually have a 10 minute education slot at every meeting. And that can be a Toastmasters topic. It can be a career related, related topic. And we have realized that when we have those education slots um, at every meeting, our membership is very healthy. When we take those education slots out, somehow our membership goes down. And I think it goes to, it speaks to the, importance of adding value to everybody who's there so even if you're not speaking or evaluating if there's an education slot you're learning something new and i often like to make those education slots career focused um, so i'll do a topic like um, it could be speaking as a leader it could be uh, how to deliver a, a great speech with no time to prepare something that's business um, focused and we advertise that and people sometimes come to the meeting just for that education slot. But again, they see the benefits of what they learn at Toastmasters being relevant to their career. Gunther, at our advanced club, we allow our members to run tests, test run business related speeches and workshops. Brilliant idea. So it sounds like you are all already doing so many things that um, can have business related benefits and that can motivate people to join your club and to keep coming back. Uh, so it's, it's all about delivering value and making people aware of the extraordinary opportunities that there are in Toastmasters when you get involved. And my challenge to you is to find a way of increasing your capacity because you are already busy and you have to find a way to take on these roles to have the learning that you're going to take to your career and to um, your life outside of Toastmasters by learning to do more in the same amount of time that you have. And I really think that there are very few people on this planet who will ever regret the time and the energy and the commitment they've invested in Toastmasters. That is um, something I think it's, it's, uh, it's a given. You will get back so much more than you put in and you will be astounded as to what you are capable of provided you, you get involved and stay involved. And as you do it, you inspire others to do that as well. Peter's saying round robin feedback is a good way to get everyone involved and give the evaluated people lots of feedback. Absolutely, I love round robins. And it also is very powerful because it um, helps even guests realize that they have an opinion and that they learn to express that opinion. And one of the biggest benefits I found from being a Toastmasters is the ability to listen critically and to analyze what has been said and to 
be able to continue the conversation based on, on that analysis and um, any feedback I want to give the person. It helps me with new clients. It helps me with my children. It helps me with my husband. It helps me with everything. So it's, it's uh, certainly paid dividends. If the employers have not heard of Toastmasters or don't care, I think all you can do is share good news with them. You cannot um, expect everybody to love it as much as you do, but I think there is value in making your employer aware of the benefits that you bring. So for instance, if they're having an event, um, you can volunteer to be a master of ceremonies or you can help volunteer to organize it and just say, you know, this is something I've learned in Toastmasters or um, volunteer to time meetings, um, which they might find exceptionally strange in the beginning, but I don't think there is a company that wouldn't benefit from having meetings start and end on time and be purposeful. So I think without sounding like you belong to a, re a religious cult, bring the benefits of what you've learned and make it available to the people that you work with. Not all of them are going to love Toastmasters, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's a starting point. Um, yeah, when they see you grow, they'll take notice. Absolutely. I agree with that. And also um, remember that whatever education award you get, you have the option of asking, of getting Toastmasters International to write a letter to your employer. And please always say yes to that, because even if it doesn't make a huge difference, it helps increase the awareness. And especially now with Pathways coming in, there are over, I think it's over 300 work-related competencies that we can demonstrate that we teach people. So that I think has made it so much easier to sell to them. Um, yeah, Bertie was saying, I was asked to be the MC of a student orientation day by my colleague. So yeah, get involved and be confident that you can add value and you know you can because all of us have sat through conferences or meetings that don't run on time, where people don't stay on topic, where they don't have a structure to their speech. And we know that we can stand out because we've learned how to do these things. So are there any other questions that anyone would like me to answer? Miroslava, article on Toastmasters about job interview helped me to impress my employer and I was offered a dream position. Wow, that's amazing. Svetlana, is there anything? Wait, let me just see what this one says. Every time I've done speaking jobs or workshops, attendants ask me how and why I'm so confident and good at speaking. Yeah. Put a link to our club in my email signature. I love that. Svetlana, is there anything you'd like to add? I just want to encourage people to, when they receive the link from the webinar, to make sure that it's simply sent to members around. And instead of Share two minutes, 10 minutes, as Aleta said, the speech, a uh, couple of minutes with your members. What have you heard during this webinar? And why would you suggest others uh, to listen to it and uh, maybe take a discussion? Now, in, uh, yeah. in the time approaching the elections, this is one of the best way, at least in my club, uh, to convince members to take roles because transferable skills. As soon as I ask people, where do you work? What challenges do you have? What are you interested in? I can easily pick from, and I also get the same inspiration from a few more clubs which are posting the same information on their side. And it helps me to show them that if they take a role in the Toastmasters, this is a place where they can practice and learn leadership skills. Uh, recently, a few Danish job hiring companies uh, made an analysis of the requirements which employers look for right from the beginning. And being a team member, being an uh, inspiration, bringing change, everything is expected to deliver from day one. And when you look back, there are not too many places where you are given a chance 
and possibility to try it, you are helped, and you also support it. And even if you make mistakes, you're very help, you're helped, you're, you get advice how to do it better. And that's why I would encourage people to compete for roles, to consider roles, take it as an advantage, as Aleta said, uh, look at her examples, how is helping someone made her uh, who she is and um, that perhaps is one of the one of the best things that we can share with others take a take a journey um, you don't need to take all the roles in the board of course this is a dream opportunity to take all the roles to equip yourself with so many skills but take few of them convince your colleagues to do this form committees be member of the committee yeah. that could uh, be yeah. a huge experience and the only thing i'd like to add svetlana is as much as these roles that we take on we get an incredible benefit i want each one of us to take the time and to make a point of thanking those people who are currently in those roles all your club officers that help your club be successful, your area director, your division director, your club growth, your PQD, your district director, anybody who is serving your district or your club, please make a point of complimenting them when they do something right, of thanking them for the time and energy they've put into it, because there's no doubt about it that each one of us has benefited enormously by their contribution. And I think it's very important for us to to recognize our leaders and to validate them, just as we would like them to do it for us when we are in that role. So have a culture in your club of paying tribute to the people who make your club so dynamic, make your meeting so successful, and make it a habit. Because I think as volunteers, we need to have the thank yous, because sometimes it is hard work and some days are harder than others. So never forget to support them and to thank them and validate them for what they are doing because we are all benefiting enormously um, from from their efforts, so um, please don't don't forget that part of the equation. And it doesn't cost you anything actually to say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And find different ways of doing it. It can be a personal thank you. It can be a message you send to them. It can be an email. It can be a voice note. But make it um, specific to them. And give them an example. You know, not, it's, it's wonderful to say thank you for what you're doing, but it's even better if you can say, I really like it when you do this, or I learned so much from you when you did that, or I wish I could learn how to do this. I admire the way you do that. Give them something specific which helps them realize what they um, are good at and that will help them develop as leaders as well. So Svetlana, if there are no more questions, that's all from my side. I don't know if anybody else would like to add anything. I'd like to add something, Aleta. It's Elizabeth here. Mm. Hi. A great big thank you. Uh, great ideas and coming from everybody. And I, I really appreciate what you shared with your club um, and how, how that's spawned off into other great ideas. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks, Elizabeth. I can only add until someone unmutes that um, we, we hope that you will also be able and we hope to join and meet Aleta in Athens if she joins us there. <laughs> I'm hoping so. <laughs> For a few more sessions. So don't lose an opportunity. Still time to join this conference. Until the Absolutely. end of the March is still a standard price. And I, I really want to just remind you all that you are all busy making history. That what you have achieved in your district over the last and districts over the last few years has never been done before in Toastmasters. And many people look to what is happening in Europe and they cannot believe that you have grown so quickly. And that is due to each and every one of you making a contribution to your club and to the communities around you. So I think you can be very proud of what you've achieved so far. And your story is not over. Um, in the beginning of 
July, you're going to reform into separate districts. And it's a wonderful new chapter that you're going to be writing. And I've absolutely no doubt that it'll be another success story. And you're leaving a legacy for the people who, who come after you. So I'm so proud to have this opportunity to work with all of you. And I just want to say thank you so much for your contribution and your support. Um, I just uh, have been so blessed to be able to work with these teams. And Svetlana, a, a big thank you to you for putting this webinar together. I think it's really been very interesting. Thank you so much for, for accepting and making people so inspired because the things I read, the feedback uh, I read, probably we need to give you another homework. Uh, I, I <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure, with pleasure. <laughs> we may consider another webinars in this case, and of course we will announce it because there are very many interesting webinars and discussions that we can take as members, but also see how can we all benefit in those master's clubs and yeah. outside those master's clubs. Absolutely, and I see in the, the uh, chat uh, box that um, the topic of corporate clubs has come up, and that's so important. So I think uh, that would be good to do another one on corporate clubs. And yes. also maybe one um, on you know, making your club a member magnet. You know, what can you do to make sure that people keep coming to your club, your members and guests? So there's lots to talk about. So um, I'll leave it to Svetlana to make, make it happen. Well, uh, dear members in current District 95, if you have, in addition to what Aleta have said now, if you have other issues which are troubling you or you want to share with us, uh, you are more than welcome to send to my email address the topics you are interested in. I will make sure I discuss this with uh, Aleta and the district team. And as soon as Aleta has the time, we announce it and we go live. That Thank sounds brilliant. You. Thank you so very much to all. I really appreciate your time. We we expect you to enjoy the weekend and have a nice time. Have a nice Easter. All the best to all. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Aleta. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Aleta, for your inspiration. Thank you. May I share something? Yeah. Um, my name is Ivan. I would like to share as a very good practice that uh, we can we can use talking games at our meetings. This attracts uh, guests very much, and it uh, develops um, our leadership skills in a very natural way. And that is uh, something that at first you don't think that it works so much, but it really works, and it pays. Yeah, and what is this for practice? Um, for example, some uh, talking games, for example, like uh, you have uh, two words that are with totally different mean, meet, meaning and you should uh, you should relate them in a kind of story, a short story, for example, mm -hmm. one minute or something like this. Mm -hmm. Would you mind, also, uh, would you mind uh, sending this to me by email and I will make sure that I include this in the message when I send it. Now it's being recorded, but I also I can also add it to the message when I will send out the link for for the webinar. But you are more than welcome to share it with everyone and I'll make sure it reaches more people. And leave your yes. address, leave your name and your email, your club, that people can get in touch with you. Okay. Can yes. you please write this in, in the chat? Uh yes, sure. Good. Um, I'm just a second. You because need my mail, okay? Yeah, it would be easier for people because when they will open the link, they will be able to see what was written there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I will also make sure that I have it. 
and I will um, and I will um, share it with um, other proposals because I believe if, if it's a nice and you have a nice and interesting experience, then uh, mm -hmm. why not other people to learn it and make yes. it get in touch with you? Excellent. Which club do you belong to? My club is uh, Sofia Business Park Toastmasters. Sofia. Well, Sofia Business Park Sofia. It then is a uh, Bulgarian Bulgaria. club. Yes, 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 yes. The good you reached to us. Uh, I was invited to join this meeting by our club president. Uh -huh. Excellent. And Excellent. I, was, I was willing to learn more. That's why. Why I joined? Actually, uh, I will send you a mail after our meeting. Excellent. And I hope to stay in touch with you. Please do so, and please encourage your members when I send the link, and I will send the link to you as well. Please encourage uh, your members to open the link and listen. And why not take an initiative and maybe present what you've heard and discuss it as an education session, as Aneta said. So take Thank a you chance. for this idea. You are more than welcome. Good luck to you and keep in touch. Bye bye. Good luck. Good luck too. Bye bye. Bye.